Hello, Code for America. That's pretty good. You know, I got to say, we're so excited to be here with you today as we near the end of this incredible summit. I'd be remiss if I didn't say that Jen Palka, Nicole Nedich, Misha Byrick, and the entire CFA team have done an incredible job organizing this summit. Let's give them a huge round of applause. So, Tony and I are very excited. The entire White House team has a very special announcement to basically share with all of you right here from this stage. But before we get there, and I can see some of you are really excited, but you're going to have to wait a few more minutes, I want to set the stage a little bit and provide you with a little bit of context. As you know, back in August, the White House, for the very first time, released the first ever federal source code policy. Now, that policy achieved two primary objectives. First, it makes sure that from this point forward, all federally produced government software must have the ability to be shared and reused across all federal agencies. And as you can imagine, that will reduce duplicative acquisitions and make sure that we save an incredible amount of taxpayer dollars. The second thing, thank you very much, the second thing that we did is we launched an unprecedented pilot program that requires that at least 20% of all custom-developed government code moving forward is released to the public as open source software. That's a big deal. And I got to say, one of the things that I love about this community is that most of us are tied together by a common thread. And I think that common thread is our collective desire to effectuate positive change in government. And I got to say, we never would have been able to release a policy of this magnitude without the unyielding support of individuals like you. So I just want to take a moment to say thank you for everything that you do and for never giving up in your unrelenting pursuit of government progress. You're incredible. Thank you. So what's next? Over the last couple months, many of you have heard us talk about this mysterious website called code.gov. Some of you have seen the stickers in your registration bags. And today is the day that we share it with the world. But I can't do it justice. There's only one person who can. He's our fearless leader at the White House and the CIO of the United States. Please welcome to the stage, Tony Scott. Hey, Alvin. <laughs> it's really exciting to be here. Um, I'm uh, just jazzed that we get to do this announcement today at this event. It uh, couldn't be a better place and better timing. Uh, and I want to also, as Elvin did, thank all of you who helped make this possible. Uh, we had tremendous support, uh, and we couldn't have done it without uh, a whole bunch of people in this room. So I'm really jazzed. But without further ado, let me present code.gov. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there it is. That's it. So code.gov will be the home of people's code. Um, it'll list all of the government's custom developed code that are, that's created from this point forward. So anything the government procures uh, will be on code.gov. Um, it's for everyone to use and everyone to contribute to, not just federal government employees or contractors. It's a new opportunity for everyone to give back to the country through a simple pull request. Anytime, any place, anywhere, for any reason, code.gov. Now, um, I wanted to just share a couple of examples of things that are going to be there when we go live with this, which might be right now. Yeah. Um, the president receives thousands of letters uh, from people every day from uh, all around the world. And he actually reads 10 of those letters every night. And then uh, gives his response, and he turns it over to the staff to follow up on. Um, and he says it's the best part of his day. But uh, we changed all that up recently, and uh, we created a Facebook uh, app uh, that now allows the president to receive one and a half million Facebook messages from people all over the world. Uh, it's pretty exciting. And that code is on uh, or can be gotten to through code.gov. I'm really excited about that. It's uh, open sourced and it's available for everybody to look at, uh, reuse, and 
Uh, copy it, do whatever you want. Fork it, make a, another exciting uh, thing for anybody in the government. Yeah, especially state and local governments can now use it to engage with their own citizens too. So it's really cool. Now, Elvin, you've got a couple of other examples that are pretty exciting too, so let's share those with the audience. That's true. So I do love the Messenger bot, and that is very fresh. The White House just released that a couple of weeks ago, and like you said, one and a half million messages already so far through that, through that app. So the next one I love is vote.gov, and as many of you know, we're only a few days away from the presidential election. Oh. Tony is pointing at you to make sure that you are all voting. Yes, and I please. think of all the groups, that's right, <laughs> that's right. I think we can rely on you guys to be voting. So one thing that I love about this is about a month and a half ago, I took a screenshot of my Facebook newsfeed. And many of you saw this on top of your newsfeed. It was asking you if you've actually registered to vote. If you hadn't, you'd hit register now and it would take you to vote.usa.gov, which is now called vote.gov. During that time, that website was the most visited government website in the entire country. And guess what? Now it's available and accessible on code.gov. So all that means now is that if you guys want to improve this, go ahead and submit a pull request. Make our platform better. Or if you're thinking of creating a similar platform, don't reinvent the wheel, folks. This is here for you to use. These are powerful tools. They're completely open source. Take advantage of them. Tony? Pretty exciting. Um, now, you've heard a lot of things in the newspaper about VA. Uh, and there's a new uh, healthcare op application process on vets.gov that's just had tremendous success. Let me share a little of the data with you. In the first month when this went live, over 11,600 applications were submitted, and over 4,500 resulted in an immediate enrollment um, compared uh, or update to a previous enrollment. Now, what's cool about this is when we compared it to the old site, doing 400 applications a day now, we're doing 60 per day on the old site. So this is a great example where a great user interface uh, and something that's easy to understand can make a huge difference in the lives of our veterans. I'm really excited about this one. And now millions of Americans, including veterans themselves, can make vets.gov better without ever stepping foot into the VA, without ever stepping into a government building or having to be a government employee or anything else. Anybody can do it, so can you. Find it on code.gov. That's right. So one of the things that is very important to talk about here is what can you do now? And we have basically a big request of everybody in this community, which is we're building this in the open. And this is just the beginning, right, Tony? It's only version one. And there's a bunch more coming, right? There's a, there's a bunch more coming. And as you can see, we are building in the open. We put up a little bit of a screenshot of our issues on GitHub. We want you to go out and actually help us build version two. This is just our minimum viable product. It is something that we're very proud of, but we're also really excited about what's to come. And one thing that I want to echo that Tony said earlier is that Code.gov is for everyone, right? It's for technologists and non-technologists alike that want to make our technology platforms better. It's for those individuals who want to improve the way that our veterans access the benefits that they deserve. It's for those resource-hungry students who aspire to be the next Turing, the next Hopper, the next Zuckerberg. And ultimately, this platform is for you. And we can't wait for you to get started. Right, Tony? We're pretty excited. Where's Matt? Can I? Matt Bailey, where are you at? We're at Matt Bailey. <laughs> He's somewhere in here. Somewhere in here. Are we live? Maybe not. We're waiting for the cash to clear. So, <laughs> you know, go figure. Uh, any rate, I just want to say thanks to everyone who helped us do this. We have a great team in, uh, in my office in, uh, in uh, Washington that did a ton of work on this. Would you guys stand up? I want to give you some credit. Uh, Elvin did a phenomenal job as well. Uh, this is something that we'll be proud of for years and years and years to come, and you, you guys just rocked it. You did a phenomenal job, so thanks so much, and thank all of you. Thank you we very really much. Appreciate it.